you so much, ministers. We don't want to miss anyone. Let me move on. I'm going to go to the book of Jeremiah and the 10th chapter and two verses there, 23, 24. And I greatly solicit your prayers um, this morning because this is one of those messages. This is, this is, this is. Carlotta, what was the Lord saying to you? What was the Lord speaking to you? Oh, put it in the microphone. What did, what did you hear? Put it in the microphone. I felt it speaking through you. What did he say? Get ready for my miracles. Wow. Come on. Thank God for a word. Thank God for his word. Amen. How many need a miracle this morning? Then celebrate God for a word. Get ready for miracles. Amen. Thank you. Jeremiah 10, 23, 24. I'm going to read this from the New King James reading. And it says, O oh Lord, I know the way a man is not in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. O oh Lord, correct me, but with justice, not in your anger, lest you bring me to nothing. Um, listen as I work on myself. Here's a prayer of Jeremiah, and he's asking the Lord to direct him, but also to correct him. I cannot ask the Lord to direct me and don't allow him to correct me. And if he corrects me, then I must be obedient to his corrections and follow the leading that he gives. He corrects and he directs. He directs through his, through his word. The word is a lamp to your feet, light to your path. He will tell you through his word what you need to change, what you need to do, and how you need to come in alignment with him again. I don't like to be corrected, but I like to be directed. Because correction sometimes seems leads to the thought that I've done something wrong or I'm not functioning right. Correction was difficult as a child. This generation calls it time out. If time was out, we were out. The, the tr and I'm, please hear me, I'm not gonna put God as a big bully that he's gonna beat you down, but Jeremiah says here, if you're going to direct me, correct me. Amen? I didn't like when my father corrected me, but I thank him for it. But what I mostly didn't like, when I should have been corrected, he just walked through the house and said nothing. And when time came, Julianne, for him to correct us, he said, I'm going to get you for old. <laughs> well, hold it, hold it, hold it. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute, you always went out of my house. And I was thinking, well, what are you storing up? And one day he went to work, he worked in construction, he was a cement mason, and we were in the front yard playing baseball. Had this big window in front of our house, picture window. And we were playing baseball, plus we had water hoses, we were waiting everybody down, trying to cool out, it's summertime. All of a sudden, the baseball went through the window and water came into the living room. And mom said, well, I'm going to tell dad when he gets home. We couldn't fix a window that fast. He came home, he saw the water in the living room, he saw the window busted. He went to his room and didn't say nothing. We were nervous all night long but he came and he corrected it for old and new God is not like that he doesn't store up <laughs> oh yeah and Jeremiah is telling you here if you do this 
in, in, in your anger, you're going to wipe me out. He's not a bully, God, that he's storing up things so he can come back and correct you. There are consequences to our actions. God is not like man. Thank God. I wish God would have told my father that. The people here in Jeremiah's day were stooped in idolatry. They were just carried about with idol worship. They needed something physical to see because God, of course, is a spirit. But they all together, they were brutish, he calls them. They were foolish, he calls them. That's in verse 8 of that 10th chapter of Jeremiah. The whole stock was just a stock or a doctrine of vanity caught up in idols. They perished through their doctrine of vanity because they did not want to receive God as he was. And God would bring, because he couldn't do it, because he would destroy them, he brings the, the Babylonians an instrument to correct them. It's idolatry and this doctrine of vanity, it's seen everywhere. You can see it in, in some Christian circles. You can see it in some churches and some believers. You get caught up in empty things, empty things things. Following that inner star, vanity. Going to get your palm red, vanity. Trying to talk to Cleo, I'm sorry, trying to get someone to give you direction, vanity. It's not in man to direct. It means nothing. Our trust should be in God's directions and follow his leading. Follow his leading. Teach me, he says here, he's teaching me that, that so I, I, I wanted God to teach him so he would know, direct me, correct me. Directions to go. We wanted to make sure he was doing things correctly. Teaches of God is the discipling of God, how he disciples us, how he leads us, how he guides us. As a parent, again, brings discipling and directions to the children, so God brings it also to us. Lord, I need you to... Direct me and correct me. Can I honestly say that God is directing my life? I would want to say yes. Can I honestly say that I get in the way of God's direction for my life? Can I honestly say that my attitude is on point? That my attitude is okay? Or do I need my attitude shaped? Because when somebody starts correcting, first thing that goes is my attitude. And I'm angry with everyone. And before you know it, I think everybody's against me. Because God is allowing me to be corrected and not destroyed. How is my attitude? How do I really feel about Jesus? How do I feel about his people and the people that he's put around me to let me know that ain't going to work? You should do something different. What am I watching on social media? Correct me, Lord. Is my whole morning tick and tock, tick and tock, tick and tock, tick and tock? And less than five seconds in prayer? Correct me. That I become a TV mania. Got three fire sticks. One in every room. I says, you don't need all that. You need to spend some time with me. What am I doing with my life? How is my form or my frame presented to others? Do I really present Christ? Or is there some changes I need to do to make my life more brighter and be the light that he wants me to be? Jeremiah is praying this. I'm speaking this. Proverbs uh, 16 and 9 also gathers this thought of the same and he says, a man's heart plans his way, but the Lord directs his steps. I got plans, but I need God to direct my steps. I'm, I'm glad all my plans didn't work out. I'm so glad God derailed a whole lot of them. Didn't feel good. I didn't like it. I was upset. Amen. Don't say, man, just whisper, whisper to somebody, say, I'm glad that one didn't work out. I'm so glad that didn't work out. I was, I was, planning, I was planning big stuff. God said, we ain't doing that. We ain't doing that. 
I'm going to mess it all up. Because I'm directing and I'm correcting. Yours is to walk. To walk. You plan your way, but God directs the steps. I was preaching this some years ago, and I was, think, I was thinking about the process of walking and God directing that when you pick your feet up, you're going to put them down somewhere. And the blessed thing that God doesn't allow you to put your feet down in some things. He directs your steps and puts your feet where it's supposed to be. If we're not, you're walking to the same ditch over and over again. The blind leads the blind. They both fall into the same ditch. Correct me. The first part talks about direct me. Correct me now. It's an impulse that I am here being pulled by God into a right order. I don't want to be consumed in this, but I want you to correct me and now direct me. As you direct me, I will follow. I never like asking somebody which way to go, but if I'm lost, I need some direction. And you see, there are a lot of individuals that are lost today, and God's trying to give you directions, but you don't want to go that way. I don't want that Jesus way. I want to do what I want to do. I don't need that much Jesus right now, but a day will come. You're going to need a whole lot of Jesus. So you better get a little bit right about now and hold on to it. God, direct me, and then I will still have trouble because you're directing me, because you're teaching me through a troublesome moment. But you have authority over the trouble that I'm walking through. Every morning, I honestly pray, God, please correct me. Direct me. Establish me. Let me set firm on the way I should go. Proverbs 3, 11, 12, he says it like this. My son, do not despise, Proverbs 3, 11 and 12, the chastening of the Lord. Don't despise the disciplines of God. Nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he corrects. Just Proverbs 3, 11, 12. Just as a father, the son in whom he delights. I'm going to make sure you're not going to wreck your life. Because I'm going to direct your life and correct your life. And I'll bring you back from that wandering mind so you can become everything I want you to be. If he did not direct me and did not correct me, it would be a tragedy and a life wasted because I did not follow his correction and his direction. Once God brings about this arrangement and he begins to line us up, there's something that within us that we resist against the order of change because the order of change is what he wills, but not what I will. So I push against the will of God. I don't want to go this way. You're being pulled out the grocery store. They have set you up as a kid for checkout. Everything is there that mama told you you ain't getting when we go in the store. And you're still putting stuff in the basket, and she's putting it back out the basket, like we're not taking this out of here. And because she won't pay for it, you just decide within yourself, this is going home with me, and we're going to get this in the car and share it. It's just that nature of, of ours. Proverbs 20 and 24, a person's steps are directed by the Lord. How then can anyone understand their own way? How did this happen? If my steps are directed by the Lord, then how do I understand my own way? The Proverbs is counseling here to us uh, of the weariness of our directions, our understanding. God, you're directing, so how did this happen? It's because you got off track and you lost focus and you were not hearing me. 
You were listening, but you were not hearing me. And I was trying to bring you this way, but you wanted to go that way. Oh, Lord. I don't understand everything and why it happens the way it happens, but I'm glad this morning that God is in it. A steps of a person are directed by the Lord. And then can, how then can anyone understand their way? You direct. Better not bring that up. Better not bring that up. Um, allowing things, God does, allows things in his permissive will. But then he orders things in his perfect will. You just got to do what you want to do. All right. Go ahead. But I'm not going to let it destroy you. But it's not my perfect will. It's just the permissive will because you have free will. But I'm glad he's in it so he can bring me back from it. That's a mighty God that we serve. We are often confused about the events surrounding us. I didn't sign up for this or that. Many things we'll never understand in this life. Never understand the ill treatment of people and how things go the way they go. It's, it's mind-boggling. What did David say? He said, I could have handled this had it been an enemy. But when it was my familiar friend that lifted up their heels against me, it was more than I can bear. It was just overwhelming because I expected an enemy to do this, but not a friend. But the Lord says, I'm driving this. You just keep riding. I'm driving this. Never understand it and all, uh, others will fall into this. Others will, other things will fall in place as the years go on. You'll look back and see how God was working. How God was. Um, um, I, I liked being around my, my grandmother when I was eight, nine, seven, eight, nine, because I would just see this lady's life of faith uh, with a stroke on one side of her whole body. And she could very, very, very hard to get around, but she loved the Lord and she was faithful to the house of the Lord. And I, I would see her tenacity of serving God in spite of what she was going through. And um, later on, I understood in life uh, the hardness and hardship that she came through and her deep love for God. And that deep love came out of a hard place of suffering. Um, I think the Bible talks about a woman that's going to love Jesus more because the one that's been forgiven most is going to love the most. So all that heart times you went through was only to bring you closer to Jesus and now you get to him and he saved you through all of that stuff brought you here not to lose you now he's going to take you all the way into the fullness of what he wants you to have because he's driving this years or later we'll understand it by and by um, um, yeah yes Psalms 37, and I'm, and I'm closing with this, Jeremiah. David gives us an encouragement here in, res, in resolving, the promises, the, resolving the promises of God's direction and, and then invites this scripture into our lives to, to trust the Lord, Psalms 37. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he likes or delights in his way. God ordered the steps. And I couldn't help but walk through what he ordered. If I walk through what he ordered, then he's able to bring me in it, through it, and out of it. Painful as it is, he's still God. Psalms 37, 24, though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down. For the Lord upholds him with his right hand. Not only am I correcting and directing, I got my hand in this. If my hand is in it, it's the best hand you can have. Because I'm certain <laughs> that no one can pluck you out of my hand. So David says, so then I've been young. And I've been old. And I have never seen the righteous 
forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. Thank you for keeping your hand in this. Thank you for directing this. Thank you for ordering my steps. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I've seen it all my life. He's been faithful. Young and now I'm old. The enemy wanted me when I was young. But now I got a little bit more wisdom. All that I have, all that I'm going to be, all that I'm going to accomplish is because the Lord has been correcting and directing. Teach me, David. I'm walking and God says, I'm right there with you. You don't even understand how close I've been near you. I saw it coming before you even happened to you. I knew this was going to be the outcome, but my hand is in it. And if my hand is in it, you coming out all right. Because no one can come against you if my hand is in it. You cannot touch my anointed and do my prophet no harm. Evangelist Jackie Ramon, God's hands got to be in it. If God's hand is in it, I don't understand it, but something good is coming out of this. Oh my God. All my life you've been faithful. All my life you've been so, so good. With every breath that I am able, I will sing of the goodness of God. Lord, guide me and direct me and correct me and lead me so I'll know where I'm going to end up. Help me finish this David in Psalms 23. He leads me beside still waters. Tell somebody it's going to get easy right through here. I know it's been rough up to this point. You just came through a valley of shadow of death. But I'm going to get you to some still waters where things are flowing smoothly and calm again in your life. I didn't bring you here to have more turbulence in your life. I brought you to a place with still waters. Yes, come on unto me, all you that are labor and heavy laden. I'll give you rest. Take your yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly. You shall find rest for your soul. Flowing streams, peaceful streams. Oh, happy days when Jesus washed my sins away. Days of darkness will be, but more light's got to come out of this darkness. He's correcting and he's directing. That's why you're still here. Because you're allowing the Lord to direct your life. You ought to give him a crazy praise or he didn't drive you off a cliff or leave you somewhere tore up from the... Y'all ain't putting it in. He has... Preach to just one person every step. God's been right there. Every move, God's been right there. Everything, his hand was in it. Everything the enemy meant for evil, God. My God, my God, my God. My God, my God. I need somebody to give God a crazy. Yes! Correct me, but direct me. Don't do it in anger. Shake my neighbor's hand. It's the only time I'm going to do this. Tell him, that's why I love Jesus so much. He could have wiped me out. But he picked me back up. Washed me back off. And told me to run on. See what the end's going to be. Hang on in there. Be encouraged. God's not through with you yet. He's got great things in store for you yeah.
don't correct me in your anger because you'll wipe me out but correct me in your mercy so I'll survive it hmm. hold your hand up and say every mountain You brought me over. You brought me over. Every trial. Boy, every trial. You sing me through it. You sing me through. For every blessing. For every blessed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For this. For this. I I wonder this morning if anybody wants to give their life to Jesus Christ. Your steps have brought you across town, through town, in this building, and now in your home. Just a few more steps. And come to him. Come and take of him. Learn of him. Connect with him. Preacher, I want that Jesus in my life. If he can help you through it, and help my brother and sister through it, he can help me through it. I tried, but your word was just so pointed this morning. It's not in man to direct his way. I need a savior. I need a director. I need someone to show me that I need Christ in my life. He's talking to me right now, but I, I, I'm going to do it later. No, 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 no. Do it now. Do it now. Come, dear. Do it now. This is the altar call. Come. 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 Ministers, please meet me here. <laughs> she said her faith bringing her all the way up. <laughs> Come, get to this altar now. Get to this altar now. Prayer changes things and prayer moves God and God changes things. Come on. This is your pivotal point to say, you know what? God's been talking to me all year long, but now I hear him saying, go, come, reach, get to this altar. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm almost done, but I'm waiting on you. Come on. I can't figure this out on my own. I need God to direct me. Bring me to you, Lord. Don't let me leave you. Don't let me come this far and go so far away. Today I'm coming home. I'm coming back. I settle it within myself. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus for mine. I'll take Jesus. I need him. My life would not be anything without the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Anyone else want to get in this prayer? Run down here quickly. Come on, 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 come on. Hallelujah, Jesus.
encourage somebody, tell them you're going to be all right. Tell them why, because God's hand is in it. I promise you, his hand is in it. No matter what it looks like, his hand. Somebody shout glory. Begin to flex a little bit. I feel my strength coming back. I feel my help coming back. My joy is coming back. My peace is coming back. It ain't over until God says so. your hands up father we just bless you we so thankful because of your mercies we are not consumed your compassion never fails great is your faithfulness morning by morning new mercies I see today I thank you that your hand is in it. You're directing every step. I feel a bounce back praise in this house. Even though I was knocked down, I feel a bounce back praise. Oh my. My, 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 my. I feel something pushing in this house. <laughs> Looks in there and say, neighbor, let me show you what a bounce back praise looked like. The enemy wanted to bury you. Hey, <laughs> but look at your steps today. Still here. Still praising. Still shouting. 